Hello, hello, hello. This is Tamika Seaton, President and CEO of Grow Your Nonprofit, where we help startups, small and stagnant nonprofits grow through fundraising strategies, strategic planning, and so much more. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsors of my podcast, Hodges University with a campus in Fort Myers. Stay near, go far. They change lives for the better. Trinity Life Foundation Naples, helping at-risk youth do their enrichment programs. Abbott, that stands for the Associations of Haitians Living Abroad. They just opened an amazing center right here in the beautiful Fort Myers, where they will help you with immigration support, food insecurity, rental and utility billing, and so much more. Last but not least, Vaxtrus. They received a grant from the CDC to raise awareness of COVID-19 and vaccine resources in the black and brown community. Guys, today you are in for a treat. I have my special guest here, Mr. Mohammed. He is the founder and CEO of Quality Life Center. Hi, Mr. Mohammed. How are you? Good morning. Fine, thank you. Thank Good you. To be with you. Thank you so much to, for joining us. Um, you are a wealth of knowledge. I know we've known each other for several years, and this is the first time that we really, really got got a chance to set, sit down and get to know each other. So thank you. Thank you for the would, would, opportunity. Would you bless me with your presence again? Well, let's see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Because I've learned I've learned so much just just from the the half an hour that we've uh, sat down and talked about. So let's start uh, a little bit about telling, uh, let's start with you telling us a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and how you came about founding uh, Quality Life Center. Well, um, my name is Abdul Haq Muhammad. Uh, that means servant of the truth, mm. uh, praiseworthy. Uh, um, and that's what I'm striving to be mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I relocated to Fort Myers, Florida, um, and thought that I would just kind of do business in the area of real estate and buying and selling property. And <clears throat> I've observed on the evening news a uh, number of children, teenagers being arrested. Oh, wow. Their heads guided into police cruisers. And simultaneously, someone from the uh, Dunbar area uh, invited me to get more involved. Mm -hmm. I did similar work in the New York area. So I came and in a short period of time did get involved. Mm -hmm. And so we established what is called and known to be Quality Life Center mm -hmm. of Southwest Florida that provides programs for children and families with a vision of demystifying the world for young people, mm -hmm. personal and community transformation. Mm -hmm. And we've worked with children over the years uh, from two and a half up to 18, 19, 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. And so we continue that work. We have expanded over the years by uh, acquiring property that we were able to renovate. And then we um, built a new facility mm -hmm. in 2019. Uh, just before COVID and uh, COVID occurred, we had to do a whole reset mm -hmm. as many people did. Our, um, our staff um, all um, uh, went their different ways and uh, I was the only one standing mm -hmm. uh, for a period of time. So what occurred is that we started all over again mm -hmm. and here we are expanding and still serving children and their mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. and expanding programs mm -hmm. as we speak. And yeah, that, that's, that's uh, I, I, I remember uh, actually attending your um, grand opening and, and learning the history of the building. Mm -hmm. Would you, would you uh, share with us the, the history of the building was makes it so great about the, 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 the building that you renovated initially um, and what it is to, today? Well, the, that building uh, was a house of ill repute. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lounge, a bar, um, uh, after hour spot, mm -hmm. and that property was confiscated for drug dealing and money laundering mm -hmm. uh, by the U.S. Justice Department, mm -hmm. Middle District of the state of Florida. And uh, it was known or learned that I was looking for a facility mm. to run our programs independently in. 
and someone directed me to that property. Wow. And wow. so with a competitive bid, um, we made efforts for a year and was successful in acquiring mm -hmm. the property. Mm -hmm. Now, when um, we got that property, as you know, it wasn't in the shape that it's yeah. in now. Yeah. So we ultimately um, gutted it out and raised money, uh, $1.3 mm -hmm. in order to renovate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did it in phases, uh, first floor and then the second floor. Mm -hmm. And then 2019, we built another facility from the ground up mm -hmm. and raised about $1.8 wow. $1. million to do that. Mm -hmm. So what drives us uh, centered, centers largely behind our vision, personal and community transformation, mm -hmm. and the need to reach families to improve the quality of living mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. Now that's very important. You mentioned your, your capital campaigns and you mentioned how basically you started from the ground zero. Yes. And you were able to build a world-class nonprofit, which is every nonprofit's dream. Mm -hmm. But as, as you know, as we were talking about before we started, you quickly realize it's a business mm -hmm. and um, entrepreneurship is, is not an easy game. It's not an easy game. Mm -hmm. So what strategies that you found that was essential in order to grow your nonprofit, if you will? Well, for me, the advice or the perspective that was clear to me earlier on is clarity of vision. Oh, clarity uh, of vision. Um, if one may not be so clear, then life can become very complicated. Mm. You know, it's uh, so clarity of vision, uh, having a clearly defined sense of purpose mm -hmm. of what you want mm -hmm. to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, you know, make the efforts that needs to be made in order to bring that into mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. One of our programs and concepts in our organization and communicating with young people mm -hmm. is to help young people realize that if you are clear about where you want to mm -hmm. go, if you can visualize what you want to achieve, then there are, you are capable of bringing that into existence. Mm -hmm. I think um, many people hear that language, but what separates just simply hearing it from living it is directly related to one's sincerity and willingness to connect with that vision mm -hmm. and to do whatever is necessary to bring it into existence. Mm -hmm. So we try to help young people to understand that. And simultaneously, um, you're able to see the fruits of your efforts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in that way. So mm -hmm. that's, that's crit critical. I think it's a prerequisite to making progress in a yeah. new I, I, I like that analogy, how you mentioned business and then you related it to an individual. Um, I know for me, once you figure out what your purpose is in life and self-actualization, meaning mm -hmm. you know who you are, mm -hmm. right? What's, what's the intrinsic thing that make you want to get up in the morning? Because I, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles um, mm -hmm. in the 80s, mm -hmm. as you know. Uh, crack cocaine sort of took took over the entire neighborhood mm -hmm. and demolished it. There was always a, a drive-by shooting where we would we named the the helicopter the ghetto bird because it was always chasing someone. So I remember being there and knowing that I knew this is, wasn't a place that I was going to stay and be. This wasn't a place that I wanted to raise a family, mm -hmm. and I knew that I wanted more for myself. So I found early on that, that I had to always build myself up because I was always so different than everyone in my neighborhood. I got teased by the way I talked, the way I dressed, and because I was just so different. Even within my own family, I was just so different. So I, I really understand of the value of writing down your goals, believing in yourself, and then even if you're not seeing any progress, just continuing to press on with your goals. Mm -hmm. So with that said, there are a lot of amazing nonprofits out there with great causes. Mm -hmm. How were you able to send the community what your mission was and then rally support around that? I think we were blessed to attract the collective we. Hmm. I use that term because we, we're, we, we as leaders 
of a nonprofit, we get a lot of attention and credit. Mm -hmm. But these achievements are not um, able to blossom and to come into full vision without people helping. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were blessed to attract different people uh, to function on our boards, people who uh, were touched by the work we are doing with young people. Uh, they are people that came from places I have no clue about wow. um, to aid and support, even to renovate uh, mm. the initial building. Uh, one group of people renovated the second floor pro, pro bono. Wow. Um, so I have seen um, um, miraculous things happen, um, and we have worked hard to be true, um, to be um, held accountable, and we've been blessed. And so, yes, there are all of those other business elements that are integrated into what you do, uh, but I give a great deal of um, uh, credit and recognition to the collective we mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you don't know who those individuals are mm -hmm. they just show up right and aid in what you're doing mm -hmm. and to help you to accomplish the vision mm -hmm. so so building an organization from the ground up being the founder and e executive director how long have you been the executive director uh, from the genesis of, uh, <laughs> that's now of this effort uh, quality life center approximately 30 four years I guess whoa. 33 for 34 whoa, years whoa whoa and when we started non this nonprofit I didn't envision myself as a CEO um, I my vote my motivation was just to reach children mm -hmm. that I saw in the street that was being arrested uh, young people being confused and mm -hmm. and attracted to the uh, the drug epidemic that existed uh, that was my motivation to reach them mm -hmm. and as you do that work and as you raise money and as you do all of the things you quickly learn that it takes more than um, just a desire to mm -hmm. help you mm -hmm. have to structure mm -hmm. uh, boards you have to structure organizational systems mm -hmm. and strategies and methods you have to connect with multiple uh, elements in the community in order to uh, gain a level of mm -hmm. success and sustainability in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, you begin to realize that you have to become also very businesslike mm -hmm. and as well as integrating uh, perhaps one will say one's vision into the business uh, acumen in order to mm -hmm. be successful. If, if you could think about one important thing a nonprofit needs to even get started for organizational development, mm -hmm. what is that one thing that jumps out at you? Well, besides the vision, uh, having the vision, that's the prerequisite mm -hmm. in my opinion. Clarity of, of vision, clarity of purpose. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the next, I would say you you need two angels. You need, what does that mean? You need an attorney. Oh. And you need an accountant. Accountant. Yes, you do. Uh, yes, you do. I tell, I often, uh, people ask me advice about nonprofits as well as business. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, don't start until you have uh, an attorney and you have an accountant mm -hmm. and in both of those um, uh, skills uh, professions will keep you out of hot water mm -hmm. and will uh, be worth every uh, nickel you may give uh, for mm -hmm. that purpose mm -hmm. someone to often nonprofits get in trouble because they don't understand the business right of nonprofits from an accounting mm -hmm point of view as well as from a legal point mm -hmm, of view. Mm -hmm. So it's in, it's critically important to have those kinds of supports. And then to have uh, Napoleon Hill 
uh, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, mm-hmm. which I recommend, um, uh, references having a mastermind. Mm-hmm. And that is having people who uh, understand what you're doing and could contribute. So again, as an individual or the leader gets a lot of credit, but there are brighter people often than the leader that you're depending on to support and help you to bring things into existence. That is, that is absolutely correct because when I work with um, startup nonprofits or the small ones, the first thing I ask for is their board matrix or who do you think who do you think about putting on your board? And once I started hearing about husbands and friends and family, Mm -hmm. and I said, no, you need a diverse board. And when I say diverse, I'm not talking about race and ethnicity. We need a diverse set of people Mm -hmm. who are going to get, give, and help you leverage the organization. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap up, one last question. Mm -hmm. The importance of board matrix. Mm -hmm. How can that make you or break you? Well, um, I just referenced, if I'm understanding your question, you're talking about the composition of your board. board, Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, We can. That's a segment by. (laughs) I guess. Uh, One, you want to have people who are genuinely there uh, to support the Mm -hmm. vision, the Mm -hmm. mission of the organization. You want people who. Uh, you have to decide what type of board you want. Mm -hmm. There are different types of boards. There's an administrative board Mm -hmm. that runs the organization. Mm -hmm. There's an advisory board. Mm -hmm. There are policy making boards. So those are different where the CEO and his or her team basically drives the organization Mm -hmm. and they get uh, the support from advice and assistance with policy making. Mm -hmm. So there's different types of boards. It's not just one way to do that. And then you want um, a board that can work together. You want a board that that is balanced. People in finance, legal, uh, programmatic area or Mm -hmm. education. It depends on what your mission is, Mm -hmm. but you need uh, a well-rounded board. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so that's that's important. Uh, sometimes we have good friends, so I don't discourage having a friend, but the prerequisite shouldn't be having a friend. It's mm-hmm. getting people that's going to be honest with you mm-hmm. and speak the truth mm-hmm. and keep you on track. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's what you look for. You look for people Uh, brighter than yourself. At least that was my approach. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we don't want uh, rubber stampers on the board. Exactly. And you don't want them to be on your staff either. It's important that staff um, speaks uh, the truth, um, that they be honest, and they uh, advise you appropriately as well. Not only the board, but your team. Mm -hmm. You want good team members. That's that's Mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, um, Mr. Muhammad, for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Mm -hmm. As I told you, the time goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely um, invite you back to discuss uh, the importance of board matrix, because I think that's uh, very important. Can you please share with our audience how they can reach out to you if they have any questions or just want to make a, a, a financial contribution to your organization? Well, I thought you would never <laughs> ask. Um, we can be reached at Quality Life Center of Southwest Florida. Our website is there. Our number is 239-333-2100, extension 108. And uh, we'd love for any of you to come by, take a tour, mm-hmm. and learn what we're doing, see what we're doing, and, uh, and support our youth program, our summer camp initiatives. Um, and I'll be happy to uh, speak with you and share more information. And Tabika, we're grateful to you and for all of your efforts you've come a long way and you're a testimony to this i am as well i am thank you for having me yeah thank you so much so much i actually been in southwest florida i can't believe almost 20 years now Mm. and actually started from the bottom as well Mm. build a career and didn't know anyone so it can be done right when we set our goals 
Yeah, it's very clear. So, guys, you heard it here first. Another amazing nonprofit right here in the beautiful Southwest Florida. A great leader because, of course, you can't be a leader if you don't have followers. So the importance of leadership, building a world class nonprofit from the ground up. Stay tuned and uh, for more Grow Your Nonprofit episodes.